I'm not gonna lie, as somebody who has played the game since the start, I have seen a slow decline to Star Wars The Old Republic in terms of content. From 8 class stories in the base game, to 2 faction stories in Rise of the Hot Cartel, to 1 single story that everybody follows from Shadow of Revan, to what felt like an even linear story in Knights of the Fallen Empire. It's easy to say, Swirtor has come a long way and not for the right reasons. But, Swirtor is turning 5 years old this year, and with their next big expansion at Knights of the Eternal Throne on the way, players have a lot to hope for. But will Bioware deliver? Here's my top 5 things Kotet needs to do to keep its player base. And yes, there's still a player base, stop being a child. Fair warning for a few Swotor story spoilers. Somebody's blown up the machine, uh, which means they've won a huge prize. If you've played Swotor as much as I have, chances are you've been to the Star Cluster Casino on Nashadar and experienced its emptiness on what could have been a beautiful playground of betting and excitement. Well it is. For NPCs. Kind of. Then the nightlife event came around, and the casino was more full than a ranker on Taco Tuesdays. Players could spend their credits for chips that they could bet on slot machines to win amazing prizes, including the Kingpin ranker that had such a small drop rate that some players had spent millions of credits trying to get it, while I, uh, <laughs> only spent 400,000. You've either got it or you don't. Dance to the left, dance to the right, dance to the left, dance to the right, and to the left, and to the right. Yeah, 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 yeah! My point is, the nightlife event was a huge success, which makes you wonder why the hell Bioware hasn't brought any other minigames. Okay, sure Bioware, we can understand you can't do swoop racing due to server latency, but there's one massive minigame everybody loved in Knights of the Old Republic that you could bring back with ease. Can you guess? Pazak! Pazak is a game similar to Blackjack, where the aim was to get two or as close to 20 points as you could using numbered cards. Prior to play, you could choose 10 of your own cards that could help you out, like deduct points off or add points to your hand, but you would randomly only be given 4 out of 10 of these cards. At the same time, you would be up against another opponent trying to do the same, and the winner is the one who would get as close to 20 points successfully 3 times. Bioware are nuts to have not already incorporated this game into Svotor. This game could be played with an AI or with actual players. Players could even bet credits to earn more credits, though understand that there needs to be limits so it doesn't break the credit market. And players could even perhaps gain special cards by doing certain missions. Also, Bioware is a massive fan of cartel packs, so they could even put special rare cards in these packs, maybe even sell booster packs on the cartel market on their own. There were other mini games that Swotor could incorporate, but Bazak is the one that screams out to me the most. And speaking of the cartel market, although selling cards on there is a good idea, I do have to contradict myself a little bit, which brings me on to... The first pack contains... We have a Zakul Freighter, some scrap, assorted droid parts, hooray, uh, companion gift which we don't care about, and Zakulin Specialist Upper Body Armor! Okay, so as most of my subscribers know, I am known to opening cartel packs straight from the cartel market. If you don't know what they are, you can spend real world money for example, £24 for virtual currency, 5,500 cartel coins, in order to buy lottery packs. There are other things you can buy on the cartel market, but for the moment I'm just focusing on the packs. You can then buy these packs in the hopes of getting cosmetic gear, decorations, emotes, titles, colour crystals, companions, and much more. And it's a big gamble because, of course, you don't know what you're going to get. The worst part in all of this is that when Swotor does eventually shut down all the servers for good, then say goodbye to everything you've bought because it's all virtual content. Whilst I do enjoy opening these cartel packs, Bioware have seriously, seriously got to slow it the hell down. In the last couple of years, Bioware have got into the habit of releasing a new pack every month, albeit a few dry spells when players were waiting for the next expansion. Some packs had great and interesting content, many packs lacked that and it always seemed like Bioware were really trying to grind as much money as they could by focusing more on the cartel market, which they know people like me are suckers for, than actual playable content. And these packs were on top of the other items you'd find in the cartel market, including armor sets and vehicles costing 2,000 cartel coins, which translates to around £10. £10 for a single set or vehicle that Bioware probably used elsewhere within the game at some point. Bioware, I'm not saying that you need to completely stop supporting the cartel market, which is never going to happen by the way, but just slow it down for crying out loud. Maybe release a new pack every couple of months, which will give your developers more time to come up with things to add to them. And 
maybe sell single products cheaper than what you're currently selling them for permanently and more players might actually want to buy your products. And yes EA, this whole point was more or less directed at you since you're clearly the masterminds behind all of this. Even if I am more so yelling at Bioware for this. Can you turn it off? Oh, thanks. Didn't actually expect you to do it. Oh boy, oh boy. Bioware said these words so many times after the announcement of Kotfi that I actually lost count. Bioware are known for allowing you to make decisions on a dialogue wheel that you have to live with the consequences of your choices. Some of your choices in previous Bioware games literally made you rethink your life. Then Swotok came along and people were left bewildered on how choices in an MMO could actually work since everybody would be within the same game. To a point, it kind of worked, where in some cases your choices actually led you going somewhere completely completely different than had you chose the other option. Take the first flashpoints in the game, the Esselis and the Black Talon. If you chose Light Side, you could be doing a different objective and perhaps have you fight a different boss than if you chose Dark Side. Players couldn't wait to see what the choices could affect in the future. It was such a bright future for the game! Yeah, no. What actually ended up happening is that you could sometimes kill somebody which may or may not have you go to a different area of the map every now and then. And then, if you were lucky, if you didn't kill somebody, they may or may not appear for two minutes at some point within your class story. I'm talking about you, Lord Rathari. <laughs> A passionate young man. I told you I'd have your back when you faced Barras. I know. I want to hear him scream. So when Bioware emphasized heavily that they have listened to players and choices will truly matter in Kotfi, my word, players were hyped again. Could this mean that I could end up going down a completely different path than my friend? Uh, no. In fact, your choices didn't really matter at all. But then they did again! But then, then they didn't. But then they did again! But then they didn't. And on and on, Bioware went on saying that your choices would matter, players just had to be patient. So players played through Kotfi, made their choices, and awaited on how much of a difference their choices made. And waited. And waited. Until finally, voice crack, your choices mattered. Which was, if Koth was angry enough at you, he might leave your party and steal the gravestone. Whoa! Insane! Okay, sure, there were a couple of other instances your choices mattered a little bit, but none of them were actually impactful enough. Like, if you crashed Darth Maul's ship in Chapter 1, you'd simply get somebody criticising you, and nothing else. A lot of good people died that day. You didn't give us enough time to make the escape pods. I didn't have many options. It was a hard decision, but the right one. Now players are being told again their choices really, really, really will matter in Kotet. And that Kotfi is where you just made your choices and it'll be in Kotet that you'll be hit hard in the face with your decisions. That's like saying, here's a hot dog bun, we'll give you the actual sausage once you've eaten that. I'm giving Bioware the benefit of the doubt on our choices now, but if Bioware are going to keep saying our choices will matter and then they don't really, players probably won't want to stick around for much longer. They want to do multiple playthroughs and actually see how much of a difference things made. I hear so many players not bothering because of how linear things have become in Swotor. It's such a sad thing to hear as well, as Swotor has so much left to offer. So I'm going to press this next button and it's two words that we see together a lot, especially in Twitch chat, is these two words together. Group content. Right, group content. So I'm here with very little information, but it's information nonetheless, and I want to make sure we let you all know that we are currently working on group content. As many of my subscribers know, I don't do a lot of group content. I've not done every operation within the game, and it's fair to say I don't think I have any of the achievements to complete a flashpoint 25 times in normal mode or hard mode. Yes, there are actually achievements to do that. But I would be lying if I said I didn't want more group content. 
content. I do enjoy playing through the numerous single player stories that a game has to offer, but sometimes you just want to do something else. So sometimes I just like to do flashpoints and every now and then operations, just to differ away from the norm. After all, this is an online multiplayer game, but it's clear to say that Bioware are trying to move away from that because apparently a single player story is what most of the player base are playing and clearly want because of this. I still don't get that statistic when 90% of the game is a single player story, so of course it's going to look that way. Bioware have announced that they are finally working on group content, and I'm not going to lie, when I read about what group content was coming in Kotfi, I was actually excited when I read about Star Fortresses in the patch notes. Unlock a brand new flashpoint after Chapter 9, liberate the occupied worlds of Alderaan, Belsavis, Hoth, Narshadar, Tatooine and Vos by assaulting the Eternal Empire battle station, orbiting each planet and stem Zakul's far-reaching grasp around the galaxy. This actually had me thinking that each Star Fortress would come with its own differences, almost as if there were six new flashpoints in total. But in reality, every Star Fortress was the same. It played the same. It looked the same. It felt the same. And the only differences were the bosses, and even then, they were pretty much the same. Good luck grinding those achievements. Shadow of Roman was a slight step up with group content, as it gave two completely different operations, one of which actually mattered to the single player story, and two different flashpoints which again also mattered to the story. Whilst for some it is a pain to have to go through the flashpoints, with the final Revan fight you were given the choice to either complete the lengthiest single player experience or complete the Templar Sacrifice operation before the final fight with Revan. There certainly needs to be more of that, where you can either do group content to complete a section of the story, or go through the single player content as well as the standalone group content with their own mini stories. This game used to be called an MMO, and now... What can I really say? And for number one... Oh, come on now, even if I didn't make this video, I could have predicted what number one was. There is much to do, and every moment is critical. Is it? I'm Overseer Tremor. For decades, I've administered the trials that prove who is and is not worthy to join the Sith Order. Have you? Okay, so now that Kotfi has happened, which pretty much puts your companions in new positions, these are looking less and less likely to continue. Do you remember back in Shadow of Revan when each class were given their own mission to follow on from their class stories? Remember how that was two years ago now? I know, it's gonna make you feel old. And remember how they appeared to set something up larger for your character, and then it seemingly appeared to be never spoken of again? Well, that setup was Kotfi, don't you know? It was Bioware's way of trying to force each class story into the same singular path, as well as give each class story a proper ending. And for the most part, it made sense. However, throughout Kotfi, there were times for some classes where you'd think, but why would my character be doing any of this? Which is why I feel Kotet needs, every now and then, a class specific chapter to help do exactly what the Shadow of Revan class stories did. Just to explain why your character is doing a certain thing, or perhaps give them an ulterior motive. These could maybe be set once things have started to calm down, or perhaps your character is on a planet but there's something on the planet that pulls them towards it, spanning a few missions of class story goodness. When I, Technique Games, Swotor Central and Locked on Target gave our thoughts on Kotfi, the subject was brought up on how it almost appeared that the chapters after chapter 9 felt like they were trying to be a class mission to a character, perhaps by bringing back a companion or doing an objective that would make more sense to your class than perhaps another. For example, a smuggler would totally be all over the events in Profit and Plunder, but why would they even care about the events in Visions in the Dark? You're there with Satil and Mar and you're like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And then uh, you make this force item that if it makes sense if you're force sensitive but if you're playing through on like a smuggler or something you get this like really crappy looking blaster it was totally the wrong way to go about the content for each class and simply giving us in-game mail isn't exactly going to convince us of anything considering a lot of the player base doesn't even read them i once heard a statistic that swotor still makes around 165 million dollars a year and whilst i'm not exactly sure how true that is if that's the case then why the hell does it feel like the content is lacking especially when the game costs 200 million to 300 million to make. It's practically got its money back already. I'm not saying I'm an expert on how things work in terms of video game development, but 
you gotta see it from my perspective, it does seem a little crazy. Although it does, again, contradict what I said earlier, it was actually the class stories that kept the players the game actually had, until of course players ran out of class stories to play. So surely class stories should be part of Bioware's focus somewhere. It's bad enough that you want players to play the exact same Kotfi story eight times to get the specific achievements and the minor class changes. So is it really too much to ask just for some class specific content to add some variety into the story? Not a line here and there which will reference something that happened, like a proper section which only your class will be able to access. Is it too much to ask every now and then, please? Well, that was my top 5 things Bioware needs to do to bring to Kotet or else the declining players and, more importantly, subscribers will continue. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this, as I do plan to do more. Leave a like and post your thoughts on what you hope Kotet will bring and what it should bring. Check the description to links related to the topics I've spoken about, including our thoughts on Kotfi. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and I shall see you next time, and a farewell to you.